In this video, I'll show you a method we've developed that will allow you to greatly increase the sales volume of your top selling Google Shopping Ads products, even for products you thought had already maxed out on shopping. Hey, I'm Daryl from Big Flare, and one of the things that we are always doing with our e-commerce campaigns is running experiments. One of the experiments we've recently run, which we've had good success with, is something we are calling the Shopping Dupes Method. And that's what I'll be showing you today. This method is pretty straightforward to run and can create a nice bump in your shopping ads results, even in shopping campaigns that had previously been a bit stagnant. The Shopping Dupes method will actually allow you to expand your character count for all your important product titles in your feed. So listen up closely. All right, with that said, let's get on down into the details. I'm going to list out the steps you need to take in order to replicate the success that we are currently seeing. First up, the shopping dupes method is designed to work on accounts that are already having success with shopping ads. Assuming you're already steaming ahead and have some high performing products in your account, step one is to identify those products. This is gonna be really easy. Just dive into your shopping campaign, pull up the list of products and rank it in order of conversions. Right at the top of the list there, you're going to easily see the 80-20 of your shopping ads account, the 20% of products that are generating 80% of the sales. Those are the products you want to work with for this method. Depending on the number of products you have, you might want to select the top five or 10 or 20 products to proceed with. It's really down to your product list, so review your product data ranked by sales and select the right number of products so that you are covering about 80% of the total sales volume. Next up, you want to duplicate those products in your feed so that each product now has two entries in your product feed. And then what you want to do is change the item IDs. Now, this step is really important. The reason you do this is because once you have changed the item ID, Google will now consider this item in the feed to be a totally new product. The item ID is the unique identifier that Google uses to differentiate between products. So when you change it, Google thinks of the new line in the feed as a totally new product, even if everything else such as title, description and landing page is the same. Okay, so now you have a bunch of duplicated top seller products in your feed with distinct item IDs. We don't just want to launch the dupes because that would be pointless. The real magic in this method comes from the next step, which is to optimize your product titles with new keyword ideas. Go back to the drawing board and do some keyword research for your top products. You could do this by reviewing your existing search terms data, reading user reviews, and then plugging in seed keyword ideas into Google Keyword Planner and trying to generate even more new ideas. The goal of this keyword research is to try and find new keyword ideas that will work for your product that are not already being used in your current product titles. Once you have some ideas, rewrite the product titles of your duplicated items. The reason why this method works is because your product title is by far the most important item in your feed when Google is deciding which keywords to show your product ads for. By creating duplicated products, making them look like new products by changing the item ID and then rewriting the titles with new keywords in there, you are going to give your product even greater keyword coverage. You'll be targeting more keywords and expanding your reach. Now normally, your product titles have a character limit of 150 characters. But with this method, you just took your top products and gave yourself double that, 300 characters worth of space to try and keyword stuff all those new keyword ideas. Step four is to add a custom label. This step is kind of optional, but one little housekeeping trick is to also add a custom label to your duplicated products. It can be whatever you want. For example, set custom label zero to be shopping dupes. This will help you later on in quickly finding and filtering for your duplicated products when setting up your new shopping campaign. Now what you do is set up a brand new shopping ads campaign. Inside that new campaign, run a filter so that you are only showing the duplicated items you created in the previous step. This is where the custom label comes in handy. 
because if you created it, then you can now use that label to easily filter for the new items. Before you launch the new campaign, make sure to go into the original shopping campaign and make sure that the new items are excluded from there. Depending on how you have your campaign and feed set up, the old campaign might be set up to automatically start advertising any new products that come into the feed. So make sure that you aren't advertising the new products in the old shopping campaign, as that would defeat the whole purpose of this method. You can now launch your new Shopping Dupes campaign. Build up the campaign whatever way you normally like to do so, and once the campaign is spending and getting a decent amount of conversions, hey presto, you've done it. Assuming you chose good alternative keywords to slot into your product titles, you should now be showing on more keywords than you were previously on shopping. And you should be raking in more clicks and conversions as a result. The only thing left to do now is to use the extra data to your advantage, so you can keep leveling up your entire Google Ads account. What I mean by extra data, of course, is your search terms. Assuming you set up the new shopping campaign as a standard shopping campaign, you're gonna have lots of new search terms data that you can use to improve the rest of your account and make better decisions with. There's a question that my team and I are still working out, which is whether the shopping dupes method can be tweaked to allow us to effectively run both smart shopping and standard shopping simultaneously for the same product. You may already know this, but Google actually budget prioritizes smart shopping. This means that normally, if you try and take advantage of both campaign types at the same time for the same products, Google won't spend anything on standard shopping and will just spend all the money on smart shopping. They prioritize smart shopping so hard that even if you budget limit your smart shopping campaign, so that in theory there should be plenty of impressions left over each day for your standard shopping campaign, Google will still usually pretty much refuse to spend anything on your standard shopping campaigns. Yeah, thanks a bunch, Google. Anyway, one of the tweaks to this method that we are currently testing that I am very excited about is a tweak that might allow us to get around this block. It's quite simple. Normally in the shopping dupes method, we run the new campaign as the same type of shopping ads as the original campaign. So if your initial campaign was smart shopping, the dupes campaign will be smart shopping as well. And vice versa, of course, if the original was standard, then the dupes campaign would be a standard shopping campaign as well. So the tweaked version of the shopping dupes method is to simply run the other type of campaign to your original. So if the original campaign was smart shopping, then the new campaign would be standard shopping and vice versa. Now, in theory, the duplicated items in your feed are totally new items in Google's mind, with new keywords in the title to target and everything. And we know that normally, if you separate your product list and put some of them in the smart shopping campaign and some of them in the standard shopping campaign, well, this can sometimes work. So in theory, this tweaked method allows us to run smart and standard shopping ads for the same product at the same time because Google thinks the duplicated items are different products. This is exactly what we are testing right now, and our results are a bit mixed, to be honest. We've had one account where it seemed to work a bit, and then another account where it didn't seem to work so well, and now we're rolling this tweak out uh, to the rest of our accounts to get more data on how well it can work. So this is the bit where I want to ask you for help. If you've been inspired by this video to give the shopping dupes method a go, and if you'd like to join me in testing out the tweaked version of the method where we run smart and standard shopping at the same time, then let me know how it goes for you. I'm specifically interested to know whether, when setting up the tweaked shopping dupes setup, whether the standard shopping ads campaign is successful in getting a decent amount of spend, or does the usual thing happen where Google won't spend anything on standard because you're running smart at the same time. Seriously, if you run this test, and let me know your results, that's gonna be super helpful for me because the more accounts we run this test on, the more reliable our data becomes. So if you wanna help me out in running this experiment, then please let me know the results of your test either in the comments below, or you can even head over to my website, bigflare.com and message me via the chat box there. So yeah, let me know. All right, guys and girls, that's all I have time for today. I've got to go run off to my mad PPC scientist laboratory and start running the next batch of experiments for you. As ever, if you've enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date with the three videos per month that I publish, then hit the subscribe and bell button now. 
Until next time, gang, always be testing. I'll show you a method, hey, ah, that stuff really works. My throat <laughs> feels better now. The reason that the, 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 the mm. so, so, no, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm going to go back, go back to the drawing board. Okay, let's go back to that drawing board. Here we go, don't need to rush, okay.